Good morning. Welcome back to villefranche sur mer in the south of France, the village that never sleeps. And here's another edition of the vlog that never ends. But I've got a cracker for you today, because in today's vlog, we're going to look at the underwater museum that they've opened in Cannes, in which an English sculpture has sculpted the faces of the locals and put them under the sea. Talking of things under the sea, we're also going to look at the giant new jellyfish which are attacking Villefranche. We're also, of course, going to crucially look at the grand reopening here in France, which comes on Wednesday. And we're going to look at the implications of that for people coming to visit here. Are you going to have to wear masks in the street? Are you going to have to wear masks on the beach? Are you going to have to wear masks in bed? We've got it all covered. We're also, of course, going to look at the implications of the Indian variant. Are we really going to be scuppered at the final hurdle? Is it going to stop people coming into France? Is France really going to want lots of Indian variant carriers? I'm going to look at what they might do. I'm also going to take you on a tour of the village and we're going to see how people are preparing for this big, big reopening. The return to life after seven long months. As Mr. Macron might say, don't go anywhere, especially after 9 p.m. this week. The curfew changes. Roll those fantastic credits. Well, to begin today's blog though, I want to talk a little bit about a play. It's a play what I wrote. It's a play what I wrote that's in London. It opens on the 28th of May at the fabulous Wilton's Music Hall. It's called East Endless. It's about a bit part actor and super East Enders fan who lands his dream role on the show. It's really terrific fun. Stars the great James Holmes, who some of you may know from the, from the telly. He's been on the telly as James. He's been in Miranda. He was in Miranda a lot. But he's a fantastic actor. It's directed by the brilliant Mike Bradwell. And uh, there's the details on screen. It's a great night out. And if you've never been to the Wilton's Music Hall in the East End of London, it is worth it just to see the Music Hall. It is quite fantastic. It's one of the oldest music halls in London. Might actually be the oldest. Anyway, that's my plug over with. And to the first item on our agenda today. And it's this amazing underwater museum in Cannes. I was in Cannes this week uh, on Thursday for one of my um, Hago live tours. Uh, the Red Carpet City, the tour was called. Some of you may have come on it. Uh, it we had terrific fun. <laughs> Can was fantastically crowded because it was Ascension Thursday. Uh, but we, we got to look at the uh, walk of shame. I mean, fame, didn't we? When we, um, you know, where you see all the hands of the famous on the pavement. We found Merrill Street behind a bin just next to Liza Minnelli. Um, but Can was fun and we saw a giant poster for the underwater museum, which I think I'd mentioned in a previous vlog, but I wasn't actually sure they'd got round to opening. Well, I think it is now open. Um, and it's a thing that's been done by an English artist called Jason DeCares Taylor. Uh, and he's done a lot of these all around the world. I think there's one in the Pacific, there's one in the Atlantic, there's some in Grenada, Australia. Uh, and what he does is he goes to a place, in this case, Cannes. Uh, and I think he took 40 local residents and he uh, made, a, made a mask, papier mache maybe, or something like that. Uh, of their faces and then eventually selected six of them and they are sculpted I think in granite and they are giant heads which he has then placed under the ocean uh, having cleared that particular area I think there's a sort of echo bent to the whole thing uh, he's trying to point up the the damage we are doing to the sea by the the rubbish that we put down there but anyway he puts uh, these fantastic granite figures down into the sea and you can visit them. I mean, you need a snorkel. You know, you do have to snorkel, but it's a completely free museum. Uh, it's a fantastic idea. 
bit of me thinks that Damien Hirst sort of nicked it, or maybe he nicked it from Damien Hirst, but I've got a feeling it's the other way around. Didn't he do something in Venice a few years ago which involved a sort of lost world, a pretend lost world, like a sort of Atlantis thing? Anyway, that is in Cannes and it's there for you now and all you need is the ability to swim and a snorkel. You don't need a scuba dive, apparently you can just go down there and snorkel. So if you're an Instagrammer and you've got a GoPro, a waterproof GoPro, that could be the perfect day out for you. I've come out onto a promontory right out in the sea for the second item and you'll understand why because I want to talk to you about jellyfish. Now, anybody who's ever been to the south of France will know that uh, there's a bit of a problem at times here with what they call Les Medusa. Uh, a friend of mine came down here. She, she got very badly stung in, well, we won't go into detail, but it wasn't pleasant. Um, but they can be very problematic. Now, quite often the authorities, particularly in Beaulieu, they put sort of uh, Medusa nets up to try and keep them out in the summer. So there's an area that, at least where the kids can swim safely. Um, they're not lethal, but it, it can be a bit unpleasant. You need some cream. Some people say you, if you get stung by a jellyfish, you have to get somebody to, um, to wee on you. But I, I think that's an old um, queen's tale. I mean, wife's tale. Um, but anyway, jellyfish this week, as if we haven't got enough trouble, you know, global pandemic, Indian variant, giant jellyfish appear in Nice. Uh, or more specifically, they appear in Villefranche. One lady was out doing her, uh, doing her um, uh, paddling and, uh, and she bashed one with her oar. Uh, well, she was freaked out. So apparently she then went to Nice to swim. Lo and behold, she saw another one in the Baie des Anges. Since then, they've popped up right down the coastline. Uh, and, you know, when people first saw them, apparently they thought they were like UFOs or giant mouths. One person said he thought it was a, a burst tire. Um, but anyway, they're not. They're these new giant jellyfish. Nobody quite knows why they've arrived here. Uh, apparently, they just get carried on the current. They're not, uh, they're a bit like that poor whale in the Thames this week. That was sad, wasn't it? But um, yeah, they get carried on the current, uh, but they can produce quite a nasty sting. So anyway, if you're here, look out for this new breed of giant jellyfish. But you know what? The good news is, for once I've got some good news, these jellyfish, we're fairly certain, don't sting. So how's about that then? Giant jellyfish, no risk to life, but I wouldn't want to swim into one. Which brings us to everybody's favourite segment of these vlogs, my COVID-19 update. <music> Believe me, I do dream of the day when I don't have to do this, but I do know it's quite important to everyone to know what's going on here. So, what's happened in the last week in France? Well, the figures have continued to drop. They're not dropping steeply, it has to be said. I think we've still got about 19,000 20,000 cases a day. I think we've still got about 4,000, 4,000 people plus in ICU and uh, we've still got about 200 deaths a day. So there are definite signs that things are improving but they're not improving at a greatly rapid rate. That said, here's the very good news. Down here in Nice, the infection rate and in uh, the Alt Maritime region, infection rate has dropped, I think, as low as 70 in 100,000. So that really is very low. That will be comparable to many areas of, uh, of, of the UK right now. But of course, the big reopening comes this week. And with that, of course, as we've discussed before, we don't need to go back over, come the risk of what that will do. But when bars and restaurants and terraces reopen, not inside, outside, this week, it's bound to have an impact, as is the return of indoor shopping, shopping malls, etc, etc. But the reopening is going ahead, just as it's going ahead in Britain on Monday. 
So what does that mean in terms of people coming here to visit and what do you have to do? Well, you'll see from the graphic that I put up at the start of this video, masks are still quite a big part of all this. But I have some good news for you. On the 4th of May, in the Altmary team, it was decided that you no longer have to wear a mask on the beach. Neither do you have to wear a mask if you go into a park to exercise. So that's great news. Not quite sure whether I should be wearing a mask walking around here. I don't think I should. Well, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it, but um, I don't think I should. Uh, I think you're allowed to not wear a mask uh, walking around the beach, but we'd have to double check that. If you're in the town centre, however, if you go into a shop, if you go into a shop in Mal, if you're in a crowded city centre place, you are still expected to wear the old mask. Will that change? Well, the Prime Minister was asked about that this week and the answer was, but mm, that we don't know. It all depends how the cookie crumbles and how things go. But the good news is the reopening is moving at pace. It will happen on Wednesday. And as far as we know, France will still reopen to tourism on June the 9th. Now, of course, quite a lot changed yesterday in the UK with the dreaded Indian variant. Um, what impact is that likely to have on the ability to travel to France? Well, the first thing I would say is I think it makes the UK less likely to add many countries to their green list in three weeks time. So that's, that's bad. It could mean that France remains an amber country. And of course, as we discussed, if you're an amber country, when you come back here from France, back to the UK, say you would need to have a PCR test and crucially, you've got to do the 10 days quarantine, two more tests in the UK. It's incredibly time consuming. Most people simply can't uh, either afford to do it because it's expensive or take the time. But the big question we have to ask now is, is France going to be willing on June the 9th to let lots of people from Britain in here if it emerges that the Indian variant really does take hold or has taken hold already in the UK? I think one indicator of this, which worries me slightly, is that yesterday, if you looked, Germany very quickly made the UK an at-risk country. Now, as far as I can gather, what that means is that you have to quarantine going in to Germany. Now, technically, to come into France from June the 9th, you have to have a negative COVID test, done, I think, 72 hours before leaving. That's pretty standard for everywhere now. But technically, what you're also meant to do, as far as I can see, is you're meant to quarantine at this end. However, the French have never legislated for quarantine. By that, I mean there are no checks. It is a voluntary thing. It is a self-police thing. I've never quite figured out why, but I've got a feeling that it possibly relates to the same reason that... Uh, they couldn't ban household mixing. It's something to do with the Constitution and something to do with whether you can enforce that people stay in their homes or not. I'm going to get run over by the policeman now. So I guess the big question is, will France follow the lead of Germany? Uh, watch this space, because as far as I can see, there's a meeting of the EU leaders on this coming Wednesday when I think this will be discussed. Now, I think it's going to be extremely contentious because obviously Spain, Greece, Portugal, etc., are desperate to get travellers back. France is desperate to get travellers back. France is one of them, I think, the most visited country on earth. So tourism is a massive part of this economy. But it's going to be a real question for them to decide whether they really want uh, the Indian variant to come here. Now, of course, there is already uh, there is already some Indian variant here. Uh, France has got reasonably extensive genomic testing, but, um, uh, uh, which has revealed that the variant is here, but not in any large numbers as yet. So I think 
there is, I'm afraid, yet another question mark as to whether from June the 9th you can come to France. At the minute, don't let me get it wrong, at the minute, legally, you can. There is nothing stopping you. But um, I think you've got to watch this space this week. And now it's time for the bit I've really been looking forward to on this vlog. Let's go into the village. Let's have a nosy round. Let's see if we can see signs of life returning. Well, they've definitely had the cleaners in at Espuma. Sure how this qualifies as essential stuff, but I mean, if you're going on the beach, a, a pink inflatable uh, flamingo is quite important. But anyway, it's open. Good Mood Cafe looks set for a return. It's got some nice new bamboo seats outside, very on trend. La Terrasse, many of you will know. La Terrasse has been open uh, for takeaway quite a lot of the time. But there, um, oh look, there's somebody doing some work. Man at work. There we go. It's funny, I said the other day when I was doing the tour of Cannes is that you were walking around the old town in Cannes looking at uh, looking at all the um, the restaurants uh, that were closed, but, the, but it was a bit like the set of, you know those Hollywood films where they, um, it's a film about the making of a film and the stars walk through the, the Hollywood lot and alongside you have everybody painting the scenery. Well, that's kind of what Nice and Cannes look like right now. Uh, and I've got a feeling that Villefranche may be a little bit similar. This was called something else last year. I can't remember what. Something like The Good Life or something. Anyway, it's called Dry now. It's been redone. Looks like it might be going even more upmarket. I hope it's not actually a dry bar because I shan't be going if it is. Um, but look, they've got a brand new deck. They're getting ready. Over here, Lou Bantry. If you come uh, to Villefranche, Lou Bantry is a very good, inexpensive uh, choice for the seafront. You get to sit here. You get to sit right over on the on the waterfront over here, um, and uh, you really get the same view that you get at Le Son Bleu or the Mergemen, the very much more expensive places. But um, it's much more sort of family food prices. Le Son Bleu, which is one of the famous uh, seafood restaurants here. Uh, and then, of course, the Grand Mama of all Villefranche restaurants, which is the Mergemen. What's lovely about Villefranche is that the fishermen come in every morning with their catch. I discovered quite recently that the street behind Mergemen here, I think, is still owned by one of the big fishing families in Villefranche. It's obviously been in the family for generations, and it's usually where they put their nets to, to dry out after the fishing. But Right now, where, where the tables normally would be on the front here when the restaurants are open, they're using this bit to, uh, to dry their nets or to mend their nets. I'm not sure what they do, but they certainly have to lay them out. I think it's to dry them and to check they haven't got, they haven't got any holes from giant jellyfish. But it's still lovely. Rastavere, another one of the less expensive restaurants on the front. Uh, very good for pizza. Been there since 1980, but good for pizza again, quite family friendly. And again, you get the advantage when it's open of not having those white vans there. Obviously, you get nice tables outside and you get uh, tables here. And that's the great thing is you get to sit all along here. And on Wednesday, that will return. Uh, this is Spilato, which is more of a sort of wine bar, but they do serve food as well. Uh, quite good views from up there. They used to have a pool table. Not sure they've still got it. And of course here, the very famous Hotel Welcome, the hotel where Cocteau stayed for many, many years, right opposite the Cocteau Chapel there, which he painted. Cocteau described staying in, I think, room 22 up there, as he said it was like being in a box at the opera, watching life go by. It certainly is a gorgeous view, and they have a very lovely wine bar down below. It's a great place to come for a, an apero. Anyway, let's nosy into the village, see what's happening in the village that never sleeps. I can hear some sanding and some drilling. This sounds promising. It sounds like a generator. 
Sounds like life to me. Here we go. So the back of the hotel welcome. They're, uh, I'm not sure what they're doing. Maybe they're cleaning the windows. They could be cleaning the windows. Hotel welcome uh, has a laundry at the back here. This again, another nice little restaurant, local local, very inexpensive, does salads, mools. They're always famous for doing mool free. Tap house next door, that was the old English bar. Uh, Beth's currently on tour in Zanzibar. Don't know when she's back, but maybe she'll be back for Wednesday. Oh, it's very noisy, this. Normally this uh, marketplace absolutely full of tables and chairs and life. Uh, but at the minute, still closed, of course, but uh, Cosmo, Le Cosmo, been here many, many years. Uh, has been serving takeaway, but from Wednesday, of course, will be rejoining the world, as will Palmiers next door, which is also doing takeaway. And uh, Maracciaro, which does very good pizzas up there. Or Mariah Carey Pizza, as Mr. Boo calls it. I'm sure Marichiaro is very delighted we call it Mariah Carey Pizza. I'm afraid Cote d'Azan was one of the casualties of Covid. It's changed hands. Uh, I think it went up to auction. But it's been taken on by people who are clearly doing the work. And uh, it has a lovely terrace here when everything's up and running. And uh, it looks like they're preparing for reopening. I'm not quite sure that floor is going to be ready for Wednesday. Yeah, this is this is a, a local, good old local bar. Quite a few expats go. Quite a few French. It's a great mix, very lively. Run by that gentleman just walking in there. He's he's very fashionable. He's always got very nice trainers. But yeah, if you want a bit of local colour and a bit of naughtiness, come to La Far. This old boulangerie, um, I don't know whether it was a casualty of COVID or the lady retired, but it is no longer. So we'll carry on down Rue Palou, coming to Casino. It's not actually a casino, it's a supermarket. If you've ever been here, you'll know. Oh, well, just taking a look up there at the steps. This is, of course, Rue d'Eglise, which is the Rue, the street up to the church, but it looks like the Mekon, which is the Vietnamese restaurant, is. Uh, serving takeaway so, and they've got a terrace so I'm sure they'll be back with us on Wednesday and if you pop into the Meekin you can then carry on up there up to uh, to Rue d'Eglise and to the to the church which is glorious inside it's got one of the oldest organs in Nice made by the Grinder brothers I don't know they created a gay date inside as well but you never know A restaurant called Les Garçons. This is a gorgeous terrace, not when these vans are parked here, but uh, if you've been here, you will know that it's a lovely place to sit. Uh, and does quite good food. Not the cheapest place in town, but it's good. Uh, and they do do a very, very reasonable lunch. So hopefully Les Garçons will be returning down towards uh, two other restaurants, one of which is one of my favorites. Uh, the Belle Etoile here, which I haven't actually eaten at, but people tell me is very good. Hopefully they're going to be back. And then here is La Serre run by Sylvie. I've got another video on, on my channel here about the drag night they had here. Uh, I think they should do more drag in Villefranche. I mean, not that much more, but definitely more. But, This is, uh, this is Pascal, the local butcher. Very good local butcher. Open every day, very happy. Well, time for me to nip into Marie Claire, the local boulangerie. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, please, please, please do subscribe and do uh, give me a like. It makes a huge difference to the algorithm. Uh, and more people get to see me vlog. I think it makes me do more vlogs. So it's, it's, it's a virtuous circle. Anyway, it's gonna be a really exciting week here. 
it's going to be a really exciting week in the UK with everything opening up. Let's hope it's all here to stay and that life is coming back. Bye everyone, see you soon. Have a great week.